Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of February. Y'all, February was an amazing reading month for me. I read a total of 14 books. Now some of them were rereads but still 14 books is amazing especially considering like what I've read recently. I think 14 is more than I read for like the whole second half of last year not counting December because December was a little heavy reading month for me but you know what I mean. With those 14 books I read a total of 4,816 pages which is amazing. I typically start these going from lowest rated to highest rated but because I had some rereads I'm gonna start with those first and then we'll go into the new reads. Let's do that. As always all of my Goodreads reviews will be linked in the description box below for all of these books and any full review videos that I have for the books will be linked down there as well. The first book which does have a full review video is A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. This was the third reread for me. This was my favorite book of 2018. I absolutely love it. It is one of my favorite books of all time. I love this book so gosh dang much. I cannot talk about this enough. I'm trying to push it on my friends. I'm trying to make them all read it. It is beautiful, wonderful. It is, it's sort of a contemporary that has some fantastical elements, but at the heart of it, it really is just a book about how you overcome your fears and how everything that you do is in some way or another related to the fears that you have. So the choices that you make are related to a fear that you have and whether you choose to go against the fear or to hide into the fear. And this book deals a lot with mental illness. It has um, some a good list of trigger warnings. The main thing that you need to know about this trigger warning wise is that it does deal with mental illness and there is a suicide attempt in the book and it is discussed at great length. Also death of a grandparent. All of those things in here many other things as well. So again, if you have issues with that, you probably need to do a little bit of research. This book is considered a romance and it definitely has a romance aspect and it definitely has that part to it. But I think this book is so much more than that. I do agree. There are people that say that the beginning of this book feels like um, the author is somewhat exploiting mental illness for the plot of the book and at some point it does kind of feel like that at the beginning but much like when you hate a character in the beginning of a book the point of the book is for that to change so if you're not reading the whole book you're not getting the full view of that and I think that the way the book carries through and what ha ends up happening towards the end makes it all make sense. Why am I still talking about this? Again I have a full review video we'll link that down below links on Goodreads. Everything will be down below. I love this book. If you haven't read it yet, please go read it. This was also recently picked up as either a TV show or a movie. I think this one was picked up as a TV series. Um, Crystal Sutherland's other book, Our Chemical Hearts, which I also love, has been picked up as a movie starring Lily Reinhardt. I think this one was picked up as a TV series. Either way, read it now and be ahead of the movement. The next two rereads that I have are Truly Devious, and The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. These are books one and two in the Truly Devious series. I read these as a lead up for reading the third book in the series this month. This series is about a girl named Stevie Bell who gets accepted into this really fancy school called Ellingham Academy where they take in people that are kind of prodigies of specific types of things and Stevie is a prodigy of crime novels, sol solving crime solving, I don't know, CV is a crime buff and she wants to go to Ellingham Academy so that she can solve the long-standing murder and kidnapping of the founder of Ellingham Academy's wife and daughter and also a student at the school as well and it's a whole spiel from there. It involves a lot of really great characters including the love of my life, Nate, who is just the best character ever. I, I, it, to say that he's the love of my life is kind of weird because he's like a 17 year old character and I'm a 32 year old woman. But my point is that he is a writer. Like his thing is that he wrote an entire fantasy world novel when he was 14. And he has all of this pressure to write the second book in the novel and he's like completely forgotten how to write. And he doesn't like people. He doesn't like social interaction. It is the greatest thing ever. His lines make me so happy. I love anytime I see Nate on the page. He is like the best character of the whole series. So 
when I say that he's the love of my life, I mean platonically, because it would be weird. I love Nate. I love Stevie. She has no idea what humans are. Like, I'm pretty sure, I'm 97% positive that Stevie's a robot. I just love her. So there's so many good characters, so much, many good things. Obviously, I love this series. If you're interested in a full review for the whole series, I would be happy to do that. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would want to see. And now we will get into the new reads and we will start, as I said, with the lowest rated, move to the highest. The first book that we're going to talk about is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Diana who is a late 20-something highly intelligent woman who is studying um, alchemy. Basically this is a story about her discovering, she knows that she's a witch but she's never really used her powers. She feels like her parents powers are what got them killed when she was a child so she has been repressing her magic this whole time and she goes into the situation where the witches and the demons and the vampires are kind of having this whole battle and she finds this book that's super special to everybody and it's just this whole spiel. Again, I have a full discussion live show about this book from earlier this month with my friend Kate. I will link that in the description box below if you want to check out our full thoughts. This is the slowest book of all time. I, in my review, wrote, well my notes that I'm currently looking at, wrote boring on about five separate lines. It's boring. 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 It is essentially a romance that is grown up Twilight. The last probably 10 to 15% of this got really interesting. A lot of it was interesting. The aspects of the history and the studying of the alchemy and the world building, all of that was so great. It was really the romance that killed this book for me and made me not want to continue on with the series and I will not be continuing on with the series. Sometimes even when I rate something at like a 2.5, which means it's just kind of meh. I will continue on with the series but I just I can't I can't do it. Like if it's if it's a quick read and it's not great then that's one thing but when it's not great and it took me three weeks to read this book and it's I mean it's like 500 and some pages and I just I can normally read a book this length in like four days and it took me three weeks. It was just really slow and dull and not my favorite thing ever. I do really like some of the, the thought that went into this though. I really, again, like I said, I really enjoy the world building and the history aspects of it. And I, I appreciate Deborah Harkness and her genius. I mean, I know that she is a highly intelligent woman, um, that she does have like a doctorate in history, a professor of history at the University of Southern California. She has re received the Fulbright, Guggenheim, and National Humanities Center fellowships and her most recently scholarly work is The Jewel House, Elizabethan London, and The Scientific Revolution. I appreciate that she is a very highly intelligent woman and that she knows her stuff and that's why the history parts of this are so good but the romance for it just killed me. And I don't need a romance in a book, but if the romance is there, I need it to be a good one. The next book we're going to talk about is Agnes Moore's Wild Ride by Alyssa Cole. This book is about an African-American lady who lives in medieval time London? France. Europe. Let's go with Europe. Really short. It is a novella. We read it for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club. I gave this three out of five stars. It was short to the point. It was a biracial romance in a time period where you don't really see people of color depicted very well and I think that that aspect was good. Really my the hardest part for me is like her love interest is um Scottish, Irish. Just the way that he it talks like the way it's written on the page. All I can see is Merida from Brave's dad and so that's real hard to read a sex scene with that. Um, <laughs> just it really kind of ruined the book for me I'm not gonna lie. Um, I might have enjoyed it more had it not been that way but it was decent overall. I really like the writing. I will definitely check out some more Alyssa Cole in the future but I think I will look into more of her full length stories versus these kind of novellas because it's not my favorite thing but it was for a book club and it took me like an hour and a half to read and it's not a big deal. 
The next book we're going to talk about is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. It is written based off of a song. It is about the descendants of the pregnant women who were thrown overboard off of slave ships. It's a rough one. <laughs> I gave it a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy the story and what it was about, but I feel like it needed to either be longer or shorter. It has very interesting themes, but the issue for me was that it centers around a, um, a girl who is, they're essentially mermaids, but she's a girl who has the ability to see the pasts of everybody in their whole entire ancestral line. And for me, because she's able to see that, you get to see a couple of different other people's perspectives from history, but they're so random. There needed to either be more of them or less of them to make the story more interesting. It was definitely a good read. Highly recommend it. I just read that based off of hearing a few other people talk about it on booktube this month um, because February was Black History Month and so I read it. The next book we're going to talk about is The Dry by Jane Harper. This book follows Aaron Falk who is an investigator with the FBI or the Australian form of the FBI and he has returned to his hometown after the supposed murder-suicide of his best friend and his family and this is a dual timeline. It follows not only the timeline of the current day but also the past where um, Aaron and his best friend had a third best friend named Ellie and she was murdered when they were children. So it follows that storyline as well. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This was the book club pick for my local bookstore's book club in February. So I just recently had a meeting with the girls and we sat down and talked about this. It was a lot of fun. This is a super small town. It reminds me of um, if you have ever seen this obscure movie, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark from the, I believe it was late 80s. Just the small town aspect of it is very on P. On, on P? On P. Wow. The setting aspect of it is very on point. This book has a lot to do with the weather as a character. I mean, the title is The Dry. If you have not been living under a rock, you know that Australia has been on fire for quite a while. This book is set in Australia. It was written, I believe, in 2017. And so it does involve a lot of discussing how dry everything is and how much has changed since Aaron Falk's childhood. And the differences between the past and the present, not only in the lives of the people, but also just in the physical setting of the world around him. I really enjoyed the characters in this. I really liked the dual timeline. I did enjoy probably the past timeline more than the present day pa timeline. And I think that's just because I liked the teenager character that was murdered, which means I probably shouldn't like it more. I should like it less, but hey, here we are. I really enjoyed the writing. I know there's another book in this series and then she has also written another book um, that's a standalone since then. So I definitely want to check out more of Jane Harper's work in the future. The mystery in this was okay. I kind of knew some of what was going on, not everything, and I did figure out more things than what the character did as I was reading through it, but I did still enjoy the plot line of it. I will say if you are interested in this, again, it is the death of a man and his family. So one of the members of his family is a young child. I think he's like the six or seven. And it does very detailed describe his death. So if that is the kind of thing that bothers you, you might want to skip this book overall because it's not just at one point. They do describe it in a few different scenes. So if that's a thing that isn't going to work for you, then you definitely want to skip this one. Next is Rafe by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This book is, I believe it's also a novella, and it follows, it's actually a the buff male nanny. So if that's any indication of what it's about, it is a biracial romance between a white male nanny and a black doctor. She is one of the smartest people. She graduated from high school and college early. She got married really young. She had twin daughters with another doctor that she worked with who is, I believe, about a decade older than her. And essentially they've split up. She is living on her own. She has a nanny that helps take care of her twin daughters who are the age of five or six. And her nanny vanishes and she's left in a lurch 
needing a nanny and so she hires Rafe to be a nanny for her and it goes from there. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It is really sweet and really filthy. It is beautiful in that aspect. I love Sloan who is the doctor character and Rafe. Um, they are both really dimensional characters which is I don't want to say weird to get but it is weird to get in a novella to have that much character put into it. Though I do feel like they're really the only characters that the writer focused on. There are other characters in the book that are talked about but they're not as focused upon so they're not as fully developed. This is like your quintessential fluffy happy ever after kind of book. There's not a lot of drama. There's a little smidge of drama but not a lot of drama. It's mostly just fluff and smut and I'm totally okay with that. The next book is A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. This book is about a young girl who is pregnant in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and so therefore she's put into an insane asylum basically to hide her until the pregnancy is over so that she can go back into society and no one will know what happened. Basically is trying to get away from her home life, and you can put those two together and figure out why, and she tacks on with this other doctor and goes to another insane asylum and where she's helping him kind of discover murderers and it's a whole spiel from there. Uh, I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. It is a little outside of my comfort zone. It's darker than I typically go but I did enjoy it. I loved the way the title tied into the story towards the end of the book. Wonderful. I love any time like a title ties into the story. Uh, especially when it ties in in such a beautiful way. There was a character death in this that killed me. Um, just it was like they were there then they were gone and it hurt. I cried. I, I'm still, whew, it was rough. There were a few great bits of revenge on this from the same character actually. Yeah there's some discussion of revenge and like what you will do in this time period. All someone needed to assign a woman to an insane asylum was basically the word of either her father or her husband and the signature of a judge. And so there were a lot of women in insane asylums that really had just pissed somebody off and there wasn't actually a real reason for them to be there. They were totally sane but they were basically their families wanted to forget about them and so they were not treated great. Um, in some places it's better than others. Definitely you see the darker side of it in the first asylum that she's in, whereas the second asylum she's in you'll see something that is a little better, which is not very common in that time period, which is why we don't really have these type of things anymore. I loved the discussion in this of the very thin line between sanity and insanity. I think the thing that kept this from being a higher rated book for me is I'm the plot was a little weird. I'm not exactly sure how we got from A to B. The plot gets kind of weird towards the middle and then it just kind of goes in a different direction than I was expecting and it's not I'm not really sure how it got there and I think that's why I didn't necessarily love it as much as I could have. This book has a long ass list of trigger warnings and I highly recommend you do your research. I am not the person to tell you what the trigger warnings are for this. It is exceptionally long. Please do your research before you read this. It is rough. It's a real rough one and I highly recommend that if anything at all bothers you, you do some research because it's... I'm not a person that needs a list of trigger warnings so I'm not well versed in telling you what they all are but there are people that are better for that. Check Goodreads, get a list because it's, again, it's a rough one. Next is The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the first book in the Bromance Book Club, book club series. This is about a guy named Gavin who is a Major League Baseball player and he has kind of only outs in his relationship with his wife Thea. He come to find out that some of his teammates and some other prominent members of society where they are from have this boys club that is a book club where they read romance novels that kind of help them learn how to talk to their wives better and how to focus their relationships better and to help them get through rough patches in their relationships. I gave this a four out of five stars. It's very sweet, very steamy, very sarcastic. I love all of those things in romance novels so it was great. One of the things I really liked about this is that it focuses on an established relationship versus 
us getting into two characters who are meeting for the first time and starting a new relationship. And I haven't read a lot of books that focus on an established relationship. I wasn't sure that that was something that I could get into, but I really enjoyed it. So I definitely will look out for more of these in the future. I really like the talk of how pasts can shape the future and how the things that happened to us when we were children, when we were in our, early, our late teens, our early 20s, how those can affect the way that we see relationships as adults. And I think that's a really heavy theme in this book because the two main characters have never really discussed a lot of the drama and the baggage that they have from their younger years. And bringing that to the forefront is what helps them see kind of who they are as adults and what they need from a relationship. I love Thea and Gavin. They have the cutest relationship ever. I love them. There are a lot of really great characters in here that are really well thought out. Totally enjoy. Love their kids. They have twin daughters again, which is a big theme this month. Um, what kept this from being higher rated is that because it is like dudes reading romance novels to help them with their relationships, it had a little bit of unrealisticness to it that made it feel really forced in some places. And while that is kind of the point, it also did take away from some of the enjoyment of the novel for me. But I do plan to read the next novel in this book. It comes out, I believe, in March. Could be wrong. But I'm really excited about getting to the next step in this because it is going to follow other characters that we met in this book. Next is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This book I have been describing incorrectly the entire time and no one has corrected me. So jokes on y'all. This book is about two teenagers, Pepper and Jack. Jack's family, they're from New York. Jack's family has this established restaurant where they have this really famous grandma's grilled cheese sandwich. Pepper's family is from this huge burger chain and they have burger joints all over the country, all over the globe. And her family's burger joint is like, hey, we're gonna make some grilled cheese sandwiches and they make a grilled cheese sandwich and it is exactly like the recipe of Jack's small town family owned businesses grilled cheese sandwich. I know grilled cheese you're thinking what? No they're like gourmet grilled cheese they have a lot of weird toppings on them and it's weird that it's the exact same toppings. So they get into a Twitter war kind of a meme war on Twitter about the differences between the two and fighting with one another and it's kind of this whole spiel about how the big business is stepping on small business and how they're trying to take credit for something that someone else did. The interesting bit is that Pepper and Jack are both teenagers and they go to the same high school and they know each other and throughout the book they figure out who each other are and they kind of come to an agreement to take the war to Twitter and to just go for it. I give this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It was super cute. I really liked Pepper and Jack and their friends. Their friends were amazing. There were a lot of really great things in this book. For me the ending was a little weird. It was like when you find out everything that happened in the past and how we got to where we are now it just was weird. There are some things with the parents from their gener like their generation and things that happened and it's just it's just weird. There, it was a whole thing. It was very weird. I do think this book is great in discussing teenagers and the pressures put on them by their parents, their teachers, uh, the public around them, people that are kind of pushing them into being the type of people they want them to be versus allowing the teenager to be the person they want to be. There's a lot of that in here. So if you are a teenager and you have experience with those feelings. There's a lot of that in here. It's a lot of teen angst and it has a lot of tweetisms and memes and so if you're not really familiar with memes you probably won't get a lot of it. So they do actually have some of the pictures of like the tweets that they tweet and stuff in here. There's not a lot but there are some of them. All of that in here. Check it out. Super cute. Next is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third and final book in the Truly Devious series. I already explained earlier what it's about so I'm not going to do that again. This book I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I may change that in the future. I'm not 100% sure. I really loved it but I don't know if I really loved it because I loved the series. This is kind of to me is like what happened with Queen of Nothing, the Holly Black series, the Folk of the Air. Like I loved the first two books so much and the third book was not as great and so I ended up having to dock it some points afterwards and that may happen with this one as well but for right now 
it's sitting in my brain as a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. Obviously I can't tell you a lot about it because that would be spoilers, but I, again, loved Nate so goddamn much. I am mostly happy with where the mystery went. I loved seeing Stevie B, robotic Stevie, and I think... I think it ended okay. I think that it ended very well. There are some things that I do take issue with, but for the most part, I did really enjoy it. And again, if you would like to see a full series review on this, I would be happy to do that. Next is The Tyrant's Tomb by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Trials of Apollo series. The Trials of Apollo series follows the events of the Heroes of Olympus series and basically is Apollo sent to Earth in a human body of a teenage male as punishment for things that happened in the previous series and is Apollo trying to make his way through the world and to get himself back to his godlyhood and it just is a whole spiel. Apollo as a human is hilarious as hell. This is definitely the darkest book of the series so far and I think that that is true with all of Rick's series, his five book series. The fourth book does tend to be the darkest. This has a lot of friends that you revisit from the original or from the last two series I guess I should say. This book does take place a lot at Camp Jupiter so the characters that you get from there you do see a lot of. There is a lot of character growth in this, not just Apollo but other characters as well. And I love Meg from here to eternity. Meg is a demigod who basically has the power to control Apollo. She's like 12 or 13. She has the power to control Apollo that was gifted to her by Zeus um, when Apollo was sent to, Earth, sent to Earth. And I just love their relationship. They are like siblings. It is so cute. I love them. I love Meg forever. I'm super excited for the fifth and final book in the series. It should come out later this year. I'm so excited to finish this series and see how everything ends. And the last book is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is amazing. This book follows Chloe Brown who has a somewhat near-death experience that makes her realize that she needs to get out and enjoy life more. She has a chronic illness so she lives her life in a lot of pain but she chooses to leave home and to move to this apartment complex where she meets Red who is this charming, handsome, motorcycle riding, maintenance supervisor at her apartment complex and they don't really get along at the beginning but Red does kind of come around and tries to help Chloe go through this list of things that she wants to do to help her get a life. I will read directly from my Goodreads review for this one because I feel the need to. This book is an extremely unassuming cover for all that it holds inside. Two main characters with complicated backgrounds and lots of baggage, a ridiculously snooty cat, the absolute sweetest familial relationships, witty banner out the ass, super smexy times with the best combination of flirting and filth, and of course lessons about life that sink deep into your skin. I cannot recommend this book highly enough if you like contemporary, if you want to read about a biracial romance, if you want to read about chronic illness, if you want to read about people having sex. It's great. You should read it. It was awesome. I loved it. Highly, highly recommend. This is the first book in a series. They are continuing the series. It is called The Brown Sisters. The next book I believe is coming out this summer and it will follow one of Chloe's other sisters and I am so excited for it. I just cannot, again, cannot say enough praise for this book. It was amazing. I loved it. I, I uh, cannot say enough, literally cannot say enough about this book. If you haven't read it, go read it. Otherwise, you're a loser. There, I said it. So here are some of the 14 books that I read this month. Um, yeah, I read a lot this month. It was pretty awesome. If you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything that I read, please address them in the comment section below because I would love to discuss all of these books with you. Again, full reviews from Goodreads will be linked in the description box below as well as any full review videos that I have for anything. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. Whew, that was a heavy book stack. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, which this month should include, should finally include, a bookshelf tour. I promise it's coming. It'll be here. Make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!